I thought I'd put together a video to talk a little bit about the gazebo that you see at Costco. And this is something that if you walk into your local warehouse, you'll probably see spring, summer. And as you walk in, it's pretty exciting to see what you could put together for a reasonable amount of money. And I wanted to just spend a couple minutes telling you some of the things that Costco may not tell you about these gazebos. So if you're on the fence and thinking about buying a gazebo like this one, um, please stay tuned to the rest of this video. We'll talk about nine things that Costco will not tell you. And then at the end of the video, I'm going to actually tell you whether or not we recommend this gazebo that you see right here. It's the Yardistry uh, 10 by, I'm sorry, 12 by 14 foot gazebo, and uh, it's currently priced at Costco right now at around $1,499. So the first thing that Costco doesn't tell you is that the prices vary on this. So we purchased this back in May at our local warehouse for $1,899, and uh, sure enough, within a couple of weeks, the price went down to $1,699, which we were able to get Costco to match for us for at least refund the difference, and then invariably it went down to $1,499 at that point. We just said hey it's not fair to go back for another price adjustment but um, you will find these online and generally online they're about two hundred dollars more than the cost that you see at the club and part of the reason for that difference in price is that uh, it, the shipping is not included for obviously uh, when you purchase in in warehouse but when you purchase online shipping is included so what I want to do now is tell you a couple other things that Costco may not tell you and before you uh, think go any further here you one of the things you'll see is we've added a couple things here we've added a, the lights here that you see strung across we've added a fan which we'll talk about a little bit later um, and also we've added a uh, television here so uh, the second thing that Costco doesn't really tell you about this gazebo is the weight now this uh, comes in three large containers and they vary in size uh, from 111 inches, which is a little over nine feet, uh, and of course the width varies as well. But all three cartons that they uh, that it comes in are very heavy, over 200 pounds each, and are very long. So if you don't have a pickup truck or a very large SUV, you are going to need to get one for this to get this to your home. So that's the second thing that Costco does not tell you about these gazebos. The third uh, component is that the directions are very unclear. So what I mean by that is, if you're used to putting together furniture from Ikea or kit furniture, this is something that you're going to find to be one of the more difficult uh, projects that you're going to uh, put together, partially because there are so many pieces that look like each other. So let me give you a quick example. This top runner here, you'll see I'm going to highlight to it with the bolts are out. This top runner can be put on either the way it's currently put on or it can be put on backwards and it would fit perfectly both ways you won't know that but you'll see here in this case this is the one mistake that we made we actually put this on backwards it should be flipped didn't really hurt us too too much but I will tell you that this is just one example of many examples that you have of this gazebo where if you were to put it on backwards you probably wouldn't know that the piece was on backwards until you were able to go to the two or three steps ahead and then realize you have to work your way back so that's the third thing they don't tell you. The other piece is that, um, with the directions, is that uh, there are some uh, online tutorials or some online videos. I definitely recommend you follow those, you look at those, because this uh, can be complicated, and it's not a project that the basic do-it-yourselfer would should uh, tackle. Uh, really, there's this is something that someone with a skill level probably closer to a seven or eight DIY, maybe nine, would tackle. If you're into building basic things like IKEA furniture or small kits, this is something that's definitely going to challenge you. So give yourself lots of time. And just to give you perspective uh, with this, this took me 11 hours to build, and I would characterize myself probably is closer to a nine or a ten as far as DIY I built my own kitchen cabinets I renovated uh, most of my bathrooms my home so this is something that took me about 11 hours to complete and just to give you some perspective on that the base itself so these four pillars get connected by these cross beams that are at the top that base section took me about three hours to put together by myself uh, I had a little bit of help but it was minor and then the next section that you would undertake is putting the roof uh, pieces together and I'll talk about the roof in a little bit but just as the number four item on the list of the nine things Costco doesn't tell you this is not a typical DIY project the fifth thing that I want to share with you they don't tell you is that the tools you're going to need now if you look at the standard toolbox that most DIYers have you'll have a power drill in there 
Some people have, you know, a cordless power drill. You'll have screwdrivers, hammers, things like that. This is going to require an impact driver. And I know that's something that the average DIYer may not have. Not very expensive. You could pick one up at your local home center for around $99. But it's highly recommended because you're going to be driving in lag bolts. These lags up here, you see, some of these lags are going to be through bolted. You'll see on this side, up the top. But others are going to be lagged straight into the I-beams. And if you're going to try to lag these in with a power drill, you're going to either overwork your drill or you're not going to be able to uh, get enough force in there to secure these I-beams or secure these cross uh, beams to the I-beams. And it's going to result in a wobbly uh, gazebo, which is not, not going to help you a lot. So something to consider. The power tools that you need are a little bit more demanding or a little bit more higher end than what most DIYers have. Um, the fifth uh, piece that they don't really tell you about this is that these uh, beams, these posts, need to be completely and totally square, otherwise their roof will not fit. Now, this is something that, if you read the instructions, I think it's on page 9 or 10, it gives you the dimensions for how they should line up. And it is critical, absolutely critical, that you run your tape measure from beam to beam, both sides, and that you square up these beams before you mount this to your deck. Now I mounted it here to the deck, you can see, um, with some lags, but before you do that, you absolutely have got to make sure that they are perfectly square. If they are out of square, even by an inch, even by a half an inch, this can make your roof, putting your roof on this uh, structure very, very difficult, if not impossible. So it's very important that these beams are squared. So that was the number six things that Costco doesn't tell you, that make sure that the posts are squared up. Number seven is the roof. Now this is where the project gets extremely complicated. So let's just talk about this for a few moments. I wanna come under here because my camera's overheating a little bit. But there are four sections to this roof. So I want you to think about this section here is one, this section's two, three, and then four. These four sections, and I'll come outside to give you a little better illustration. Four sections of this roof fit together and are put together first individually and then they're married up to the roof one by one. First part of this roof project is to build the individual sections. So you'll see the bottom of that triangle and then the top. So that first section, it's not very difficult to build, but it does have its uh, complications I talked earlier about making sure that each of the pieces are put in together correctly. There are little pieces or little components that if you think about, if you put one cross member one rafter upside down, it may fit, but again, it's incorrect. Now on this uh, project for the roof, once you complete the, the roof sections, the wood aspect of them, then you're going to need to put the metal uh, roof uh, covering on each of these sections. This section, the smaller section here, has four pieces. So there's two small pieces and then there's two large pieces in the middle. And then when you go to the larger roof section, this is a bigger span, it actually has five. It has the, the four we just spoke of and then another centerpiece that's right in the middle here. Uh, one of the most challenging aspects of this project is removing the plastic covering that the roof, uh, that comes with the roof. And it's done to protect it during shipping, but it's a real, real pain. So putting this roof together um, is not very challenging to put it together, but when you have to put it up, it is extremely challenging. And there are many videos that, um, that you know, talk about the proper process you're going to need at least three people for this project, at least three, because the first part of this project is to drop the roof frame onto uh, the, the cross beam and then drop a second roof frame onto the cross beam, kind of marry them together in that corner while you're getting ready to drop that third roof beam or the roof section on. Now, my recommendation for you would be to use woodworking clamps. They came in so handy for us. We were able to clamp these two sections together right here and then clamp these two sections together right here and that gave us enough uh, space to be able to make minor adjustments because basically you're putting these roof edges onto the cleats up here and having to adjust them over and over and over while you're making those adjustments in order to through bolt through the rafters which I'll kind of zoom in you'll be able to see in order to through bolt through these rafters you have to have you have to have the perfect alignment of this roof rafters to be able to through bolt. It takes three bolts. There's one here, one here, and then there's one back behind the TV. We'll be able to see it in this illustration, but I'll show you over here. There. So there's three 
bolts that must be through bolted throughout each section of the roof that connect it to itself as well as being able to put the cat piece on which is above the fan there you'll see the two black look like turnbuckles there they snap through to align the roof once the roof is put together and completely squared up then you go ahead and attach the actual capping pieces that you'll see here as well as the corner beads and then at, once that's through and complete at that point you then take these brackets and secure it on to the actual cross beams. It is a challenging process. It took us about an hour to do, three people, and you need a couple of uh, ladders as well to be able to get up there because you basically are supporting the weight right above that fan and you're making minor adjustments to get the pitch and the angle correct on these roof rafters. Without that process, it's never gonna be square and you must square this roof up. That's why I mentioned earlier in the video that your post have to be completely and totally square otherwise the roof is going to, it's going to uh, not fit properly and it's going to give you um, some big headaches with that all right the next uh, that's so that's sep uh, that's uh, item number seven that we talked about as far as what Costco doesn't tell you now on item number eight so this is where it gets a little bit more tricky now when you uh, your your local township or your local county or city state may have an ordinance regarding permitting for this project and they do warn you on the Costco website that permits may be required but one of the things they don't tell you is that the artistry is not going to give you the architectural plans for this so most times when you go to pull a permit for a project like this they will ask for architectural plans which you are not able to get so my best advice to you would be to download the manual first if you are planning on purchasing this and you have a township that has pretty stringent uh, rules, apply for the permit first. Don't buy it, assemble it, apply for the permit after. If you do that, you're going to end up with uh, possibly with having to disassemble it and take it back. So apply for the permit first. You can easily download the manual for directions and the uh, manual for instructions to build on the Artistry website. Recommend doing that, and uh, that'll give you uh, an opportunity to get that approval for uh, the permit before you, you uh, buy and build this. All right, the last uh, step they don't tell you is that you must anchor this. Now, they mention it kind of briefly in the manual, but when you're in the Costco store, it's not anchored to the floor, but you must anchor this structure to the ground. And um, I can show you what we did here. We used half-inch lag bolts. We anchored these through. Um, I could have actually done through bolts on this, but we instead just anchored it directly into uh, the decking. But if you have a concrete structure, you're going to need to uh, put some Tapcons in and going to need to anchor this. Uh, if you are putting this on a on a grass structure, uh, I would say to you that you would need to really think twice about that because this is not only is it heavy, it has the ability because of the way that it's designed to really pick up uh, a lot of wind underneath and could possibly move and you do not want this thing moving. So uh, anchoring this is going to be a very, very important part of the process. So do not place this on a, on a structure where you cannot anchor it. All right, so all that said, nine things they don't tell you. Is this worth it? And I would definitely say that it absolutely is worth the price, even at the $1,899 price point. Uh, to get a cedar structure of this size, this stable, this secure, and uh, that adds value to your back room and living space is absolutely uh, two thumbs up as far as I'm concerned. Um, I guess the second time you'd build this, you probably can do it in maybe half the time that it takes you to do the first time because like anything else you learn but uh, I would budget at least three uh, days of you know four hours each day uh, to be able to, to knock this project out um, if you do it in a longer period of time you probably won't feel it as much because you can accomplish more each day a little at a time but this certainly requires three adults to put the roof on and it does require uh, a lot of patience when removing uh, the plastic around not only the roof uh, sheets but also all of the roof uh, caps as well any questions leave them in the comment box good luck with it and uh, hopefully you'll enjoy it just much as we do